Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm in the Marrickville Metro Shopping Centre car park with a nice view of Sydney CBD behind me. But the more exciting view is on the other side. And here it is. I'll start by giving you an update on the track lane with footage from a number of different days. Then I'll cover the buildings and finish up with Sydenham Station. This was how the track laying looked at the end of my last update, which was on the 11th of June 2022. The tracks laid are shown in black. I now have the official names for the various approach tracks. The track that runs along the edge of Trains Facility South is called the Eastern Bypass. And the track that runs into Trains Facility South from the northeast side is called the Western Bypass. The track that runs in front of the covered storage and workshop buildings is called the Infrastructure Maintenance Road. And the track that runs into Sydenham Station is known as the Shunt Neck. I got the siding numbers correct. They are technically known as stabling roads, but I refer to them as sidings. So here is my updated map with the new track names. With the benefit of hindsight, I realised that my track lane map, as it was on the 11th of June 2022, wasn't totally correct. What I thought was a turnout here was actually further into Trades Facility South at this location. Here is this turnout, and you can see how it will soon connect directly to the infrastructure maintenance road. I thought the Western Bypass track had already been laid, but actually it hadn't. Well, except for a tiny bit of it. This is siding one, and the Western Bypass track actually finished where this sleeper is. And a tiny part of the shunt neck track between two turnouts was actually not in place. It was impossible to see due to the track vehicles, so I'd assumed it was there. But it wasn't, as you'll see shortly. So this is the corrected map of the tracks that have been laid by the 11th of June. As you can see, there are a few more turnouts to be added and sidings to be extended and then connected to the new turnouts. In this footage on the 11th of June 2022, you can clearly see the gaps where the future turnouts and sidings will go. And just one week later on the 18th of June, most of these gaps have been filled. This was on a Saturday and there was a surprising amount of work happening. So I'm going to systematically run through what changed in just one week, starting with a little bit of track that has been added to complete siding one. Here is where the gap was. And the track now in place, with this yellow construction vehicle travelling over it. Now let's look at the extension and completion of siding four. The week before, you can see where the rails finished and the sleepers in place for the next bit. Now all of siding four is in place. The top ballast has already been poured over the track. Further up, it is a little harder to see this track, but it is there, it's just covered in ballast. Next is the extension of sidings 5 and 6 to this new turnout. Here are sidings 5 and 6, and the new turnout is just here. Now a closer look at this turnout. A small section of track that will connect siding 5 to this turnout is being put into place now. You can see the gaps in the rails here. So I'll put a little gap to mark this on the map. Next is another new turnout to link sidings 5 and 6 with siding 4. This turnout is just over here on the right. Here is a closer view of it. And last but not least, a large extension to sidings 7 and 8 and work to create a new turnout to connect them together. No track for sidings 7 and 8 had been laid at this end when I was here on the 11th of June. It was just the track bed. A week later and you can see siding 7, which is here along with siding 8 just here. Now looking towards the turnouts that will connect siding 7 and 8 together. And as you can see, lots of work was taking place to complete it. Notice the gaps in the rails at this turnout, and the rails that will plug these gaps nearby. There are actually two rails here, and another one just here. There are no changes to the Infrastructure Maintenance Road track slab, but alongside it is some rebar mesh for a future concrete paved area. On the northeast side, the tracks for all eight sidings have been in place since the 26th of May. By the 18th of June, the top ballast had been added to siding 8. This is how this siding looked a week earlier. Here is an excavator that is smoothing out the ballast on siding 5. After the top ballast has been smoothed out, a tamping machine will pack the ballast under the tracks. Once this has been done, the tracks and sleepers will become more visible again. You'll see the tamping machine shortly, so keep watching. Here is the Western Bypass track bed descending. 
The track for this has not yet been laid, except for a tiny bit at this end. From Bedwin Road, you can see a huge pile of ballast. This was adjacent to the admin building. All eight sidings are now visible from here, including siding eight, which was hidden from view last time. I wonder why all these staunchions have the same number. I've no idea what is going on here with this construction vehicle, but it does look kind of interesting, if not a little dyslexic. And whilst this vehicle continues to do some kind of yoga pose, let's look at what some of the other trucks and machines are doing. This yellow dumper truck on siding 8 is pouring the top ballast over the track and sleepers for this siding. Job done. Now the excavator is coming along to smooth out the ballast and distribute it more evenly. Meanwhile, another vehicle is on the southbound running line, and this is carrying some dark grey pipes which look very similar to this one on siding 4. The excavator is now getting to work on moving some of the ballast to other parts of siding 8. Now getting the ballast nice and level. This seems like a much more fun way to spend a day compared to working in an office. So welding is taking place on the turnout that connects sidings 2 and 3 together. This large yellow construction vehicle is in the process of crossing two turnouts to access siding 1. And it looks like the excavator on siding 8 is trying to race it. But not anymore. This dump truck that is reversing looks like it's on its way to get some more ballast. Now coming into view is this yellow vehicle on siding 1, which is picking up some sleepers. Now returning along siding 1, and about to cross the turnout with the western bypass track, which as you now know, is not yet in place. You can see the sleepers for this new track here. Meanwhile, the excavator continues to move the ballast around so that all parts of the track have their fair share. And in the distance, the yellow vehicle is now placing the sleepers into position. This is probably for one of the missing pieces of track at the junctions that lead into Trains Facility South. Let's see if we can see this more closely from the train. The small gap in the shunt neck track is here. And you can see where the rails restart here. And this is the vehicle laying the sleepers that you saw earlier. Just here are some further sleepers without the rails. This is for a track to connect with the northbound running line. You can see the turnout that this line will connect to here. You can now see many of the completed junctions into Trades Facility South. And now the sidings are coming into view. This is the turnout for siding 1 and the Western Bypass track. You can then see some sleepers, but no rails as yet. The sleepers for the Western Bypass track currently end here. So that's how it all looked on the 18th of June. I'm now going to show you footage for the 22nd of June, and quite a lot changed in just four days. I'll run through the changes, starting with this turnout to connect sidings 7 and 8 together. So on the 18th of June, it was missing some of the rails. Now four days later, and all the rails are now there, along with the top ballast, which is covering up the sleepers. Next was the welding of a small section of new rail to complete siding 5. Here is a reminder of how it used to look with the gaps in the rails. It's all connected up now along with the top ballast. 
The next addition is a good chunk of the Western Bypass track. And here it is. At the moment, it's just the rails and sleepers resting on the bottom ballast. Now you can see its connection to the turnout with siding 1. Now viewing from the train, and this is the new Western Bypass track. It's then hidden from view by the blue coloured fencing, but I reckon you might be able to see it through this gap. So I'm going to assume that the track is laid all the way to the start of the elevated section, which is where it changes to a concrete track slab. So two missing bits left. The first is a short piece of track to connect the shunt neck with all the other lines into Trains Facility South. This is now in place and is best seen from the train. And it's here where these construction workers are. And here is a better view of this new track, taken from a different angle. And finally, another little missing link to connect the Western Bypass track and sidings 1 to 3 to the northbound metro line. This is now in place, and you can just about see it from the shopping centre car park. Here is this track as it diverges from the northbound line, which is hidden by this fence, and then joins this turnout, which connects both this line and the shunt neck to the Western Bypass track and sidings 1 to 3. I'll now show you some more work, as it was happening on the 22nd of June, which was a weekday, so plenty going on. This tamping machine is currently on siding 8. Once the top ballast has been laid, the tamping machine packs or tamps the ballast underneath the track, so that it's more stable and level. Notice the tamping head compacting the ballast, usually twice, before the machine goes backwards slightly and repeats the process. This construction vehicle is on the northbound running line and has just picked something up. And here is another truck full of ballast. It looks like it's going to drop it on siding 7. On come the reversing lights and is now getting into position. So as of the 22nd of June, there are only three tracks left to be laid. These are the Infrastructure Maintenance Road, which requires the completion of the embedded track slab first, the rest of the Western Bypass track, and the majority of the Eastern Bypass track. This is now the 30th of June, and with the tamping work largely complete on sidings 3 to 8, they are much more visible. Here is a reminder of how these sidings looked the week before. The Western Bypass track now has its top ballast, and joins siding 1 just behind this orange vehicle, which is on siding 2. There is a dumper truck and another vehicle on siding 7. You can now see all the completed turnouts, and on the turnout for siding 7 and 8 is this yellow vehicle. And this construction worker here is checking a brand new section of track on the infrastructure maintenance road. So I've added this little bit of new track to the map. It's the same story on the other side, with tamping complete for sidings 3 to 8 and still ongoing for sidings 1 and 2. Here is a reminder of how it looked on the 22nd of June. These sidings are much more visible now. Here is the tamping machine, which is now on siding 1. And another vehicle on siding 2. Now there's one place that you and I would love to go, and this lucky chap is on his way there now. And his vehicle is on the northbound running line, and is now crossing the embedded track bed section. And you've probably guessed where he's going by now. Yep, into the tunnel. Going. Going. Gone. This is now the 11th of July, so about 12 days later. Most of the tamping has been completed on sidings 1 and 2, but not on the Western Bypass track as yet. Now that it's easier to see the tracks, let's do a quick recap on the turnouts. This one here is for the Western Bypass track and siding 1. 
and this one is for sidings 2 and 3. The tamping machine is currently on siding 4. This is the turnout for sidings 5 and 6. And where these construction workers are is where siding 4 joins sidings 5 and 6. Now behind the tamping machine is where the western bypass track and sidings 1 to 3 all come together. And now the turnout for sidings 7 and 8. Here is the map again, just in case you need it. The track slab for the infrastructure maintenance road has been covered with materials, but to the left of it are two new rails. These two rails have been placed along the edge of the embedded track slab. You can also see the new paved area behind the track slab, which was rebar meshed two weeks earlier. The new rails continue all the way to the covered storage building, or possibly beyond it. That was the horn of this tamping machine. It doesn't seem to be doing any tamping, but I guess this machine has other purposes, such as checking ballast levels or track geometry. This little excavator is quite speedy when it runs on the rails. Here are the ends of the sidings again, as they looked on the 11th of July. Tamping has now been completed for sidings 1 and 2, and all 8 sidings are now much easier to see. The new track on the Western Bypass line is now much easier to spot, and you can see one of the rails for a short while as the line ascends. The track on the start of the ascent is new, so here it is on the map. Let's now take a quick look at the buildings, starting with these two, which are part of the overall operation of Sydney Metro. No obvious changes to the high voltage building since my last update. And no obvious changes to the services building either, except for the dark insulation panels appearing on this side. The dark insulation panels have also appeared on the Bedouin Road side and on the longer side that faces the rail corridor. Now for the buildings within Trains Facility South, starting with the reception, security and fire control room building. In just one month, this building has got a roof, a number of glass windows where the entrance will be, and it looks like some dark insulation panels are starting to appear as well. This is how it's looked one month earlier. The covered storage building is now finished, so I'll move on to the workshop buildings. There have been some minor changes to the small building in front and the main workshop building behind it. You can see some stairs and a small brick building contained within this workshop. This is the admin building and the only obvious change is more cladding on the southwest side. At the water treatment plant you can see some material covering the brickwork, I'm not sure if this is temporary or permanent. No obvious changes when viewing from Sydenham Pit. Now on a train leaving Sydenham Station and going towards St Peter's. Notice all the completed platform screen doors. I'll come back to those a little later. This footage was on the 11th of July. I'll start by pointing out some of the key tracks and junctions for Trains Facility South. Now coming into view is the Shunt Neck track. And where these track vehicles are is the double crossover junction. So on the map we have the shunt neck track here and the double crossover here. Now look out for this turnout on the southbound line where the eastern bypass track verges off. And this turnout on the northbound line that provides a connection to the shunt neck track and trains facility south. Both turnouts start here and the yellow arrow follows the line that links to the shunt neck track except when it's hidden by the fence, and the orange arrow is over the eastern bypass track as it diverges to the right. The junction with the shunt neck track is just before this yellow construction vehicle. The eastern bypass track now continues alongside the existing rail corridor and is quite visible. Now another look at this new link track from the northbound line, and this bit of track which I haven't mentioned before, that links the shunt neck with the lower numbered sidings and the western bypass track. Both of these link tracks connect to this turnout here. I'll also show you where the eastern bypass track currently ends. The orange arrow is following this link track as it leaves the northbound line and heads towards this turnout here. And the yellow arrow is over the line veering off from the shunt neck track and is now connecting with this same turnout. 
In view now is the southbound running line, which currently has extra rails within it. And closer to the fence is the eastern bypass track again, which is just about to end here. The southbound line is still visible, and behind it you can see the tamping machine in the sidings, and much closer, this cherry picker adjacent to the fence. The short embedded track slab section of the northbound and southbound running lines starts just before where this white ute is, and then gets easier to see. From here, you get a wonderful view of all the freshly laid track in Trains Facility South. As the northbound and southbound tracks start to descend, don't let this ballast fool you. The tracks are on a concrete track slab, similar to the tracks at Chatswood Dive Site. Notice the metal cable conduits on the tunnel portal wall. And there are more of these metal cable conduits waiting to be installed. They will house the future power, signalling, data and communications cables. The lines go underground just here. Now lots of materials where the future eastern bypass track will be. Now coming into view is the slightly elevated track bed for the western bypass track, which now has some sleepers. Here is where it joins the eastern bypass track. These tracks have been laid for a few months but still require tamping. The eastern bypass track now continues under the Bedouin Road Bridge, and then ends at these buffer stops which are coming into view now. So we saw the current end of the eastern bypass track, the tunnel portal, the slightly elevated western bypass track bed with a few sleepers close to the junction with the eastern bypass track, which then continues to just beyond the Bedouin Road Bridge. Now on a train in the opposite direction. And passing the high voltage building and getting a closer look at the dark insulation panels on the services building. Now let's take a closer look at the sleepers for the western bypass track. I was surprised to see sleepers, as I thought the tracks would be fixed to a track slab. Maybe they will be further up. Here are some views of this turnout and the sleepers from the Bedouin Road Bridge. In the background, you can see the covered storage building. And now the workshop and admin buildings are coming into view. Along with the water treatment plant. In this direction, the embedded track section finishes here, with both lines visible until the southbound line gets hidden by the fence. Here is the start of the eastern bypass track, and the two tracks from Trains Facility South coming in on the other side. This vehicle is on the northbound line, and this one is on the Shuntneck track. And now this cherry picker and other vehicles on the southbound line. Followed by this vehicle on the northbound line. And now the extended platforms 1 and 2 for Sydney Metro trains. And of course the platform screen doors, including many that were installed very recently. Time to take a closer look at these. And here they are. This is the most significant work that has taken place at Sydney Station in recent weeks. This is looking into Platform 1 from Railway Parade. Platform screen doors have also been installed at Martin Place Central and Waterloo Stations. Each door weighs about 200 kilograms and is 2.7 metres high. Here is one of the new seats. I've also seen this design of seat at some of the other stations on the Bankstown line. Here is one at Marrickville Station. This is peering through a gap in the hoardings on Platform 3, so what you're seeing here is Platform 2 looking towards the north. Also looking to the north, more of the new seats, and I reckon a next train display will soon go in here. Now looking towards the other end of Platform 2. It all seems so quiet at the moment, but it will be very different when Sydney Metro services start. Jumping back to the 11th of June, and the final tranche of platform screen doors were lined up behind this hoarding, waiting to be installed. The big kid in me just wanted to unwrap them. Just one week later on the 18th of June, and all these doors have been installed, so that's remarkable progress. 
So to answer the question that's on the forefront of your mind, has the Sydenham aerial concourse and the two new entrances opened? Well, the answer is no. I guess it's going to open next month. A clue that it will open next month, or even this month, are the Burroughs Avenue signs appearing on the platforms. However, there are only signs for the new Burroughs Avenue exit, with arrows at the top of the stairs pointing to the right. There are no signs as yet for the new railway parade exit, which will be on the left. So it looks like the new railway parade entrance will open later. This entrance will be owned and staffed by Sydney Metro rather than Sydney Trains. For this reason, it may not open until Sydney Metro services start. I'll finish off with some footage of the new aerial concourse. So now wrapping up this video at Sydenham Station. So if you enjoyed it, do give it a like, give it a thumbs up, do leave a comment or question below. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and also consider joining me on Patreon. There's a link in the description below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.